Camille and today we are doing a very special video. I am bleaching my hair. And the reason this is a special video is because since the last video I did showing how to bleach my hair and now I have experimented so much with different products and different ratios until I found the perfect method that gives you the best results in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of damage and I've gotten this down to a science. I actually like weigh out my ingredients so almost professional. Disclaimer, I'm not a professional, I'm just an internet person. So I'm really excited to share this method with you guys and I really hope it helps someone out. So this is a several day process. You guys probably know that by now. You don't want to do all of these things to your hair in one day because it's gonna damage it more. So I like to space it out and I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do on which day and that's gonna help you figure out how to plan your life around it because you don't wanna go out like one day into bleaching when you've only done one round and your hair is like brassy and that's like one of my greatest fears that I'd have to do that so I always plan my hair changes in advance so I know that I won't need to leave the house for like X amount of time from when I start to finish so I don't have to go out looking crazy and I'm gonna be dyeing my hair after this and I'm so excited because this is one of the hair looks I've been wanting to do for so long and I'm finally going to do that and I really hope you guys like it and I think you will because oh I don't know if I should tell you I'll tell you guys anyway so here's the hint my next hair look is going to be similar to the one in my most viewed video that's all I can tell you guys I'm really excited to do it but we have to get through the bleaching part first so this is officially day one. Day one, you want to moisturize your hair and leave it in. So when you bleach it, it's not gonna be bleach on top of dry hair. And it's okay to use some products and then bleach through it. It's not gonna hurt the process, but you do want to have some sort of thing in your hair. And that's all you wanna have in your hair. You don't wanna have any curl creams, any gels, any hairspray, anything like that. Just wash it, detangle it, and put in some leave-in conditioner. The one that I used is the Aussie Three Minute Miracle Deep Conditioner, which I find is less thick compared to the Three Minute Miracle one, and I didn't want to have like too much in my hair. So I did that, and then I Dutch braided it. Thank you, I know they look good. <laughs> I had to do this one twice because it was so bad the first time. So that's all I have in my hair. I braided it while it was damp. And then you wanna leave this in for a day just so it can soak into your hair. Maybe do this in the morning or the night before. I usually do it the night before. And the reason that I like to do Dutch braids is because it's cuter than French braids. And the reason that I like to do either of those is because you already part it down the center. So when you section it off when you're bleaching it, it's already got one of the major parts in it and you have your hair detangled and it stays detangled because it's in the braids so you don't have to deal with that and when you unbraid it it comes out wavy instead of curly and when it's curly a bunch of hair just like clumps up together in the different curls so it's harder to section without hurting your hair and damaging it and possibly ripping some of it out. It just makes the process so much easier, so that's why I recommend doing the braids and leaving it in for a day. So we're about to go on to bleaching, but first I wanna say something. Have you guys noticed anything different? If you haven't noticed, I did my makeup differently today. I've been trying different products, different methods, and I can't wait to make more makeup videos showing some of the different things I've been trying out lately. So comment down below what you think of this makeup look, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and social media link down below while you are down there. And now that we're done with all of the day one stuff, just go do your life for a day. Okay, so day two of the marathon, this is your first hard day at work. I eventually took out the braids and loosely made that hair into buns earlier that morning because I was going out, but I still have the same texture and it's just as detangled and I have the center part down my head. So the first step is to take out one side and section off your delicate hair. I know my hair well, so I know that the thinner hair is around the circumference of my face and the hair at the nape of my neck. But if your hair is different, then feel free to skip this step. I just know these are the areas for me that need less processing time, so I do this to minimize damage and protect from breakage. 
I'm putting these sections in scrunchies to save them for later and then attacking the center hair. I divided it horizontally because the back of my head usually takes way more time to process than the top because I think the top produces more heat so I like to go from the back to the front so it ends up more even. Then you want to put your gloves on so you don't burn your skin and the same shirt you've been wearing every time you bleach or dye your hair for the past seven years. I hope you all have one. I got these gloves from Overtone at some point in life, so thank you for that. And now it's time to mix a nice fresh batch of bleach for my hair and I finally started doing this by weight to be more accurate and less damaging. So I start with my current favorite bleach, which is Blonde Brilliance Express 9 level. And I'm going to use the scale I bought specifically for dyeing my hair on Amazon. I'll link to the products in the description box so you can find everything. And I'm replacing the bowl it came with with my hair dye bowl from Sally's and then zeroing the scale so it only weighs the bleach and not the bowl. Then pouring in slightly over one ounce of bleach. The recommended bleach to developer ratio is one to one and a half, all the way up to one to two and a half. And with this line of bleach and developer, I found that it works best with my dark hair with a one to two and a half ratio bleach to developer. So now I'm using the same lines 35 volume developer and measured out about two and a half ounces, slightly more because my bleach was also slightly over an ounce. Of course, one of the most important products you hear about mixing into your bleach is Olaplex, which is super expensive and also only available to salon owners. So I used an affordable and accessible version by Ion called their Absolute Perfection Kit. Step one is what they call the booster, which gets mixed in with the bleach itself, just like step one of Olaplex. And then step two is the color sealer that restores the bond in your hair after bleaching. They recommend using a quarter ounce of the booster for every two ounces of bleach, so I used an eighth of an ounce since I used one ounce of bleach. This is also why I used a 30 volume developer because it makes the developer you use 10 volumes less effective, so it makes mine equivalent to a 25 volume developer, which is pretty perfect for my dark hair, but not too strong like a regular 35 volume would be. Ion also has a sensitive scalp protector that you can add to your mix to prevent burning if you have a sensitive scalp, and I use this on my second round of bleach because my scalp's always more sensitive round two. Now you're gonna mix it together and keep mixing and mixing until you get a really creamy texture and you get rid of all the lumps. Sometimes I use a plastic spoon to smooth out the powder bleach lumps before mixing any liquid in to prevent it from clumping. And if you try this, make sure it's a plastic spoon, not a metal spoon, for the same reason that you only use plastic mixing bowls so it doesn't react with the chemicals. Once your mixture is smooth and thick, it is time to start sectioning out pieces of hair to attack. And because my roots are so long, I'm gonna do this all by feel and a front mirror. When it's shorter, I use two mirrors to see it better, but in this case, I didn't feel like I really needed it. And I'm not using a brush because I think it's easier to spread out through curly hair by hand since it's not as simple to paint a layer like it would be on straight hair. And it's really important that you spread it out evenly so you can prevent your hair from coming out patchy. I'm sectioning off pieces of the larger section to work with for the same reason. It's better to have small sections at a time so you can get even coverage, but you also don't want to go extremely slow because you don't want the part that you do in the very beginning to process too much longer than the rest. So I'm pretty much just taking these sections, saturating them in the bleach, and then laying it on top of the other saturated pieces without using any foil. Foil's just not really my thing, but whatever makes you happy because that's the whole point of being alive. Now I'm taking the front quadrant and doing the same thing, although I guess it doesn't really qualify as a quadrant because I sectioned out the edge pieces, so it's more like 20%, but you know what I mean. Once that's done, I move over to the other side and do the same sectioning, which looking back, I don't know how I forgot to do that in the beginning because it saves a solid minute during the process, so probably do that first and then go on to the back 20% ish chunk and do those pieces. The front part looks a bit more like 22% and you can do that next. Then we're moving on to the circumference area and I'm starting with the back since it's delicate but it doesn't see as much sun so it takes on less sun damage than the front and can stand a little bit more processing time. Then I'll do the front last because it processes so fast 
and I don't worry about my baby hairs round one because they legitimately go blonde in one round so I usually try to do the really tiny delicate pieces only once in round two and getting to this point already took so long and so much effort but don't worry you still have 60% to go since I'm only bleaching my roots and not the ends, which were bleached before I dyed them, I'm going to saturate the ends as much as possible with my ion keratin treatment so that while the bleach is processing, I can also have a keratin treatment processing on the bottom. And I used a lot to completely saturate it, just like the bleaches on the top, so it doesn't matter if the bleach swells or drips, it won't really wreak havoc on the bottom. Now you DIY a hat out of a plastic bag. Shout out to upcycling to saving the environment. Although I really should have remembered my reusable shopping bag and not have this in the first place, but I will next time. This helps trap in the heat from your head, which is what helps the bleach process and gets your hair to lift more, which is why the first quarter inch of roots touching your head is always lighter faster. So you wanna get the rest of the hair to share that heat. And you can also use a shower cap, but it'll get gross on the inside, and I find the bag easier to separate the bottom hair a bit. I left the bleach in for about 14 more minutes because it processes pretty fast, and this is what it looked like. After carefully rinsing all the bleach out of my hair with only water, I'm doing the step two of the Ion Olaplex dupe, which will help repair the bonds in your hair, but has to be done before you shampoo to work. It says you have to leave it in for 10 minutes, but I've used this so many times that I can assure you that it keeps working past 10 minutes, so I left it in for a whole day. The goal for round one is to get as light of a yellow as possible, and it should turn out a similar color to mine, maybe a bit lighter or darker or more or less yellow depending on your hair color and type, but mine usually gets a bright yellow to an orange depending on how close it is to the scalp, and a lot of people like to do the roots close to the scalp separately, but I'm not doing that because I'm dying over all of this after and it's going to be pretty close after round two anyways. Okay, so day three of work should be put off as long as possible so you can do hair treatments or just let your hair rest before bleaching again, which makes a big difference, believe it or not. But this is just a deja vu day where I come out wearing the same shirt I do the same thing except left to right instead of right to left so it'll be exactly even and I wait those 14 minutes. I rinse it out the same way, style it, and here's the result. So this is what my hair looks like after bleaching it and doing the step two of the ion hair treatment as well as my own um, protein treatment. Because whenever you bleach your hair, it's really important to do protein treatments and moisturizing masks because your hair will be like dying after you bleach it, especially after you bleach it a second time and if you started from dark hair. So I always make sure that I do that so I can make sure that I don't lose all of my curls. <laughs> but yeah, these ones seem like pretty nice to me. My hair is still a little bit warm tone right now because I am not going to be toning it because the next color that I'm doing is warm tone, hint, hint. So the fewer processes that I do on my hair at a time, the better. And if I don't need to tone it because it's going to be a warm color after anyways, then I'm not going to do that. If you want to have cooler toned hair or if you're going to keep it white, then you can definitely use a lavender or a silver toner. And I have a video where I showed you exactly how to do that process starting on hair like this. So I'm gonna link that down in the description box. So if that's what you're looking for, then you can start with this video and then finish with that one. I don't usually wear my hair parted down the center, but I wanted to just be able to show you guys what it looks like after it's bleached all the way down to the roots. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you're going to bleach your hair, I recommend doing it very slowly over time and doing moisturizing and protein treatments in between and just being as gentle as possible. So I've been doing my best to figure out the exact perfect process ever since like seven years ago when I started doing this and it's definitely gotten better over time. So I hope you find this video helpful. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe because the next video I'll be posting is my next hair color, which I'm so excited for because I've been wanting to do this color combination for so long and it's kind of bold and I don't know why I just like kept putting it off for a while. So subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss that video. Thank
thank you guys so much for watching this video. I wish you all a happy, healthy life, and I'll see you in the next one. Kisses. Mwah.